Australian SAS Selection, Part 3. Let's fire this bad boy up. By day two, the candidates' bodies have been softened up. The regiment now begins to work on their minds. What are your principles? Loyalty above all other things, sir. That's one principle. Strike first, strike fast, strike often. Those are my principles. Interviews conducted by serving and veteran SAS soldiers probe for signs of mental weakness. Relax. They begin with Candidate 53, a physical instructor with the military. So you like being PDI? I do enjoy it too, yes. So you um, like being basically in, in charge of people? I wouldn't say that too. I just like the lifestyle and the, lifestyle. Uh, the opportunity that's provided me. All the, the PT gear, the, the Lycra. So look at him. He got a nice Lycra jacket on, his little Poly Pro. Looks all done up. Notice the fact that his camis don't have any wear on him. His hat ain't dirty. He got no wear on him. Them cats, man, they seeing everything. They gonna say, man, this is crazy, man. This dude coming here with unworn camis. He ain't never even been in the field in these camis. Hey, casual too. All the nice PP shoes and all that. I guess a lot of people see PDIs uh, as lobsters, um, body full of muscle, head full of shit, <laughs> you know, because they're the guys wearing the tight shorts and the tight shirts and stuff, walk around the base where everyone else has to wear cams and that, they do come across to a bit perceived as posers or whatever else, but that's just whatever. I can tell you a poser, bro. Your hat ain't dirty. You got a brand new boonie hat, ain't got no dirt on it. I mean, shoot, I ain't got to say no more than that right there, partner. You calling yourself a poser, man, that's what it is. I've seen PDIs like you come and go before. It's all too hard. Living in the field, bit of rain like this, cold, hungry. You might be ripped and a little bit toned and passed a few of your PT sessions now. You don't get that tucker and that fuel in there. What's gonna happen to that little body you got? It's gonna shrink. You're not gonna be able to do what you need to do. No, nah, wasn't me at all. They have a perception of who they think I am. And obviously they're trying to either solidify that in their own minds or me prove them wrong. So I had a PI in my class when I was in SQT, man. Dude's a stud. And super in shape, no body fat, always eating creatine and protein shakes and ate clean. My man went into chronic cramps, man. We found him eight hours later crawling on the side of the road. So 100%, man. Once again, we need a draft horse. We don't need a we don't need a race car. I don't need a Ferrari. I need an F one fifty pickup truck. Better yet, I need a Toyota Hilux with diesel. I'm not gonna let anyone intimidate or put me down for having a crack anyway. So they can think what they want. You are to demonstrate your literacy and clarity of thought by submitting an erudite, inventive, and stimulating essay about yourself. Your essay will be studied by selection course staff in order to find out more about you and why we might consider you for further SIS reinforcement training. Stop the presses. I just failed out of Australian SAS selection. I got to write a paper. At this point in my life, I was completely illiterate. That page would be full of incomplete sentences without punctuation and a ton of misspelled words. Well, we're about three minutes and 58 seconds into this video, and your boy just exited stage left because he's going to have to write an essay, and it ain't going to be good, and they're going to be laughing, and God help me if I ever have to write a report. Woo! I'm already done, folks. Three minutes and 58 seconds in. They got me to write an essay. Now, I'm going to tell you how to found a workaround. I might have showed up with a couple essays already written. Pray to God they didn't change the topic. Crikey. I've never seen this in 30 years. A bloody flip book. <laughs> Bring Cardiff 4 in. Cardiff 4, what the hell am I looking at? That reading and writing stuff is overrated. I came here to become Neo. Dismissed. He's creative. He found a way to win. Thank you, sir. 
Candidate 130's confident entrance quickly evaporates as the interviewers assess his personal essay. What you've written here seems to me is a whole heap of shit. It doesn't tell me anything. In an attempt to be different, I wrote, it wasn't flippant, it was light-hearted, merely a, a tale of my life, like Roald Dahl. And um, when they told me they couldn't stand to read it, I was pretty upset and I was on the back foot from there. He did it on purpose, folks. He tried to go out of the way and do something different. You've got to be able to stand on your choices. You're going to see your boy come up next. You're going to see how it went down. Tell me no bullshit about your life. So I believe I am who I am. Uh, due to nine years boarding school. Taught me the value of comradeship, friendship, loyalty. Strength, old school principles. I'd, that's me, sir, through and through. I still don't know anything about you. What's your family life like? Families are they divorced, sir? Um, they don't really talk to each other, but uh, I am their go-between. My principles come from my mother more so than my father. What are your principles? Loyalty above all other things, sir. That's one principle. Strike first, strike fast, strike often. Those are my principles. Honor, friendship, sticking by your mates. Think you do a good job in a small team? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. You don't reckon you've been a little bit arrogant with that? No, sir. So how long have you been thinking about the selection course? Uh, quite a few years, sir. Quite um, a few years. What, before 05? Yes, sir. Um, so it's I, taking a long time to really sort of... I had some going up to do, sir. Up the arrogance it. that is perceived, that, that had to be controlled. That was there, was it? Yes, sir. Why were you so arrogant? It's probably a defensive um, reaction, sir, to the unknown. Um, what are you afraid of? Failure. Uh, failure? Yes, sir. What, so failure to what? Failure to what? To live up to my own expectations, sir. There were so many points I wanted to bring across, but the questions were just, wow, I, I didn't achieve what I wanted to. I really didn't, and I have to make up for it. Move the bar quickly. Lead a shoulder width apart. I'm just going to say this. In those interviews... You can overcome a lot by your physical prowess and your ability to kick butt out here. As long as you don't say nothing crazy in there, they're looking at you, they're taking notes. Um, in my opinion, you know, being driven by failure and all that other stuff, there's a lot of motivations to go to selection. At the end of the day, you got to be able to perform in the physical tasks. And then if they see a problem later on, then you're just not going to select. Up, it's easy to give up. It is easy. On the third day, a brutal PT session provides the staff with a clearer picture of how the men are travelling. By day three, you will see a delineation between the strong members on the course and the people that haven't prepared themselves or probably aren't going to finish the course successfully. So one of the things that's very interesting in SEAL training, on day three, you have probably 20% of your class they cannot move anymore. They can't walk. They can't lift their arms. They have gotten so sore that their bodies are telling them they cannot move anymore. And that's what's going on here. You got these guys. I mean, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's an axle. It looks like it's about a three foot, you know, long two inch round piece of steel pipe. Probably weighs maybe 15 to 20 pounds. And they're doing overhead presses with it. And a bunch of other exercises. They've probably been out here, you know, clearly the sun is up. They've been out here for probably an hour, two hours. Um, the one thing I do notice on, they got running shoes on and not boots right now. They're in PT session, right? And you got guys that are struggling to raise the bar over their head. They ain't come physically prepared. They're about to be exposed, exposed heavily, exposed bad. Did you try? You didn't try. But there is the anomaly. There is just the bloke who's got plenty of ticker and he hangs into the end. And 
there everywhere in the regiment, I think. That's what makes it such a, a special place. This is your first PT session and you're struggling now. From here you'll see activities that are designed to create fatigue, uh, that are designed to put people out of their comfort zone, to put them the key point. Uh, and what they're trying to do is trying to reduce the person down to their I guess, basic personality and it becomes very clear whether someone's going to be able to do this job later on down the track when it's really counting. The directing staff are everywhere, constantly looking for candidates that aren't suitable. There is nowhere to hide. Well, they want to make sure that uh, they're going to get the best. They've all been through it themselves. Uh, they know what these people are going through uh, and they're mindful of um, what we need as a unit. Understand this, they got some old salty dogs rolling around in SAS. They got some of them old war veterans who are not going to allow them to lower the standards to get more people in. We over here in America talking all this nonsense about who should get in, who should be in the job, who can do the job. Let me tell y'all something. Them cats down in Australia... They're going to hold the stand. If you feel you cannot carry on, then just rest the bar on your chest. You will be assessed by the operators and they will be you unsuitable for their environment. After another day of intense physical and mental pressure, a steady stream of candidates is withdrawing. OK. Cheers. No worries, mate. Yeah, these uh, blokes that you can see behind me have elected to withdraw our own request. Uh, so they've handed in uh, the form to the senior instructor and he's instructed them to come back up here, pack up their gear and just wait till they come and get collected. We kind of change uh, tack at that point. I mean, clearly these guys have the gumption to turn up. They've given their all as hard as they can on the course. So uh, we no longer have to be stra too straight-faced and uh, stony with them. I, in fact, respect them for having the, uh, the gumption to come here, have a go at the course at least push themselves to the hardest of their limits. Man, let me tell y'all something. Respect and understanding are two different things. I'm looking at you like you ain't make it. But really, I'm not giving you any thought. I'm not giving you any thought at all. You're gone. You're gone from my mind. I keep it moving. I saw some incredible people quit during training. Incredible people. I never thought about them again. Lava. Once they have been psychologically assessed, they are left to reflect in what is known as Camp Happy. As you see at the start of the course, soldiers doubt themselves. they got families. So I'm just going to tell you this. Man, Camp Happy, X Division and Buds, they got that same tent. They got that same tent. I'm going to tell you this. Them cats in that tent ain't happy, though. They depressed. They questioning themselves. They in a bad place, man. You don't ever want to go to that tent. Camp Happy, stay out of Camp Happy. Don't go to Camp Happy no matter what! Um, not that confident in themselves, and they withdraw from the course very early. It's just something in that little back of their mind just triggers them and say, look, this is not for me. I couldn't have asked for a better preparation. You know, done everything to the letter and more. I've basically been training for about 18 months. I've got three daughters under five years old. I just, uh, basically just reached the point where I didn't think it was fair on them. I think I spent so much time trying to convince my wife that she could cope with it. I never actually convinced myself that I could. Maybe I fell in love with the dream and not the actual reality. That's a very real statement, man. Commend you, brother. Because I'm going to tell you this. You go to the SAS regiment, you ain't got no family no more, brother. They gone. Uncle Joe taking care of your family. I'm going to tell you, you got kids and a wife and you want to go to the regiment and you think you're going to survive? No chance, man. No chance. The regiment becomes your family. Your brothers, your sisters, everybody you in your family becomes a regiment. Commend you for not losing your whole family. Take Everybody take that to note. You go to the selection with a family, man, that's some baggage you're not going to be able to tow. Those willing to dream on will soon face the most brutal test so far. It's just four days into the gruelling three-week SAS selection course. 130 hopeful candidates have been quickly reduced to less than 90. The remaining men now face a task designed to reduce their ranks even further, the 20-kilometre pack march. Candidate 42 relays the rules to the men. We're all lifting up. After breakfast, we'll clean up quickly and get set up for the 20 clicker. The weights for the 20 clicker are 20 kilos in your pack, 8 kilos in your webbing. 
Any questions? Four out. A lot of guys are concerned about this. this is another pass fail activity. 20 kilometres in, three hours 15 maximum time. So you either get under time, you might get another bite at the, uh, at the cherry, but even then you're even more fatigued later on. So it's pretty much either do it this morning or go home. That's not something you want to do twice. <laughs> is the equivalent of a half marathon with a bag of bricks on your back. Only those prepared to push through the pain barrier will succeed. There's a purpose to the, uh, the 20 kilometre. Uh, this is a purpose with all the runs and uh, that might be a mission objective that uh, while we might use aircraft, watercraft or vehicles to uh, insert our people, uh, they might not be able to get right to the target. You might have to walk in. So mission planners have to know that these guys can actually walk 20 kilometres to a target, do their mission, and they might have to walk 20 kilometres out. So it has a, a, a mission objective as well as the uh, fatigue factor for the course. Down in Australia, it's hot, really hot. Clearly, they're not making them pack all their water on this 20 uh, kilometer march. They got water bottles, water buffaloes, refuel stations. These guys are hitting it, taking a break. Man. Mm. Mm. The men have to maintain their fluid intake, but also keep their water bottles filled so they don't drop under the required pack weight. And that weight can be too much to bear. Yeah, what happened? Back. Back. Backs, hamstrings, calf muscle in that order. Not prepared. Didn't do enough burgeoning. Didn't do enough rocking before you got here, partner. Now your time has come and you are on your way out. few will make it easily. That was 44 minutes. Most will just get home in time, like 109. Well, about three hours and seven minutes ago we started, and I've been in the hurt locker since then. I did not have to do that again. It wouldn't have worked out well. He is in his own head. Oof. That's a bad place to be. Bad place to be. That's about all I've got. I feel like I'm going to faint, to be honest. Three hours, 34 minutes. Many of the men are finishing well outside the time and will be forced to retest. Amongst them is 81, one of the youngest candidates, only 22 years old. Three hours, 36 minutes. Something not lost on the course selection assessors. Why didn't you pass it? I'm not sure, sir. That 20 clicker is easy. You're going to be climbing up the sides of some features in the coming week that high that you'll probably sit beside God. And you found that 20K is too hard. You didn't achieve that. I'm looking at a 16-year-old boy sitting in front of me. I'm just concerned that your age and your maturity, you're still, you're not right. You're still underdone. Underdone. Put him back in the oven. Same thing I say. There's a reason only one out of 200 high school graduates make it through SEAL training. They underdone. They're not ready yet. They ain't got that back. Put him back in the oven for a couple years. He'll come back, have a better understanding of what he needs to do, more mature, physically mature body, able to crush train. I think you lack confidence in yourself. No, I don't believe that's true, sir. Prove me wrong, 81. If you pass that 20 clicker, it'll change my opinion of what I've just said, reference your confidence and your ability in yourself. I think it's just a, that was just a scare tactic for him to see how I'd react. This course is pretty much designed for you to fail and see how you react about failing. That's pretty much what it is. Okay, let me say this, Candidate 81. You failed. This course is about passing stuff. Trust me on this one. Everybody gonna fail something, but they ain't talking to you because they wanted to see how you're gonna do if you fail. They talking to you because you failed. The quickest way not to let them talk to you is to pass. So don't think that they trying to get you to fail so they can come talk to you. That ain't what they looking for, partner. Not at all. Candidate 42 is over 30 minutes outside the cutoff time. Oh, they even got the truck! That's called the Goon Squad truck. 
If the goon squad truck passes you and you got to get in the back, you're gone. And buds, you're going to go to goon squad, but man, you can't let the goon squad truck pass you. They eat, see, it's all the same training, folks. We got the goon squad truck. They got the goon squad truck. All right, let's see what happens with this bad boy. He is so far behind, the staff tell him to throw in the towel with the other non-finishers. I saw it when I come in. They don't even when I take me out here on a fucking stretcher. We're in a box. So I'm not quite there yet. So, so I just keep going. That's all there is to it, you know, he's got to put one foot in front of the other. However, 42's determined words are worth nothing when only numbers count. Three hours and 52. You had three hours and 15 to do it. Yeah? That's a long way over time. Yes, it is, sir. So what I'm looking at is I don't believe you've done the correct training or done enough preparation or hard training to get yourself across the line. That was an individual test. You're under no duress from PDI or staff. That was entirely up to you to perform, and you didn't perform at all. You're looking down the barrel of another 20 kilometers in a day or so. Sir. As when I got the SEAL training, on the very first day, we had a four-mile time run. The cutoff was 32 minutes. I ran a 38-minute, 50-second, four-mile. The difference between SEAL training, I was just in the beginning phases. So I was able to work out at night, run myself into condition, because that was October, and we didn't class up until January. This type of selection, boy, you better come there in world-class condition. Massive amounts of volume. You better be crushing these numbers because there is no place or time for you to get in shape in these environments. My man right here, he learned that the hard way. As well as up and coming PT sessions that are coming on. So physically, I don't think that you've got what it takes to be here. The interview, you certainly, um, I guess it's hard not to be intimidated, you know. I mean, like the, at the end of the day with the 20 click of the cut off 315, and I was outside that, so I, I can't control whether they, they choose me. All I can do is come here, give 100% on, on everything, you know. Um, what, what, what can you do? What, it's like I said to you the other day, that the worst thing I could do is stop. Let me just say this. There's a lot of guys that show up to training and think all I got to do is give 100%. 100% is the standard in these environments of these elite special operations teams in the world. 100% is where you're expected to operate all the time. If you can't meet 100%, then you're not going to be there. So now we got to marry 100% with the three minute, three hour and 15 minute standard. You came in at two at 350. Your 100% ain't close to the standard. Therefore, you ain't going to be here.